Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Silicon Angle, Wikibon, Crowd Chat, HP is the is the unofficial HP Discover site. Go there for engagement, trending stories, trending hashtags, a bunch of crowd chats, and watch the live feeds. The keynote, Meg's keynote, will be there. Stream live, the Cube, and a lot of other greatness there. See what's going on in the crowd, and then get more information. Our next guest, Bobby Patrick, CMO of HP Cloud. Welcome back to the Cube. Great to see you. Oh, it's great to be here again. So day one, we're here live. Meg has not yet to go on, but we got a teaser from Jason Newton on, right. on an old, come of the four pillars of innovation. Yeah, right. I mean, the messaging is pretty damn good. I got, I got, I got to say, right. solution I'm, focused, I'm, transformational. It's relevant, right? Right. It's right in the sweet spot, but it's interesting, right? I mean, you right. got um, hybrid infrastructure, digital uh, enterprise, data-driven enterprise, right. workplace productivity, which is essentially user experience. Right. And in in between all that is right. the integration right. of security. Cloud. Right, cloud it's runs through it all. It's not a product. Right. There's solutions. So, you know, the cloud's an integrated world. Then you agile, DevOps, that's what you live in. Right. How does that relate to the, the HP messaging? Because you can read into it generically. Right. It's all products. Right. And you guys are a big part of that. How does that weave in there? Yeah, well, I'm really excited. It, cloud does run through all the four transformational areas, and um, it's a delivery mechanism. It's how you, how, you, how you do business these days. The first transformational area, which is transfer to a hybrid infrastructure, I'm really excited because the word hybrid is in there. And as you know, we put a lot of time and energy into, into talking to customers and analysts and working through the right wording around, around these key areas of transformation for, for IT. And it's about hybrid, it's a hybrid world. It's a distributed world. It's a world where, um, uh, in some cases, multiple clouds operate in a unique way. They may have proprietary or open standards and they operate together, but they operate together to solve some business problem or some business outcome. With this area though, calling it hybrid infrastructure, it goes a little farther than hybrid cloud. It goes into traditional IT too. It's a recognition that enterprises are going to run existing applications for some time. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to modernize and move to, private, to, to, to cloud to get some benefits and uh, lower costs and get some speed to agility. And they're going to want to build net new and, and, and cloud native. And they're going to work on all three together to deliver higher market share, to grow the business, higher customer satisfaction. So it's good to be part of that core it's message. A, it's a lot of bundling. We heard the word con, uh, um, composable infrastructure Composer, from right. the converged infrastructure group. Right. You hear you guys are talking infrastructure as a service pass, integration, right. microservices. Microservices, right. containers, orchestration, Kubernetes. <laughs> I mean, it's a buzzword, <laughs> bingo. Day. No, Docker, you didn't say Docker. Do well, yeah. Containers generic. I do, right. oh, Kubernetes. <laughs> right. well, that, so, but we saw each other uh, um, at Van Vancouver just recently at OpenStack, right. right? Which was a hot trend that's really growing right. now. And you guys had a lot of boots on the ground. Right. I mean, huge team. Um, that points to the fact that this hybrid world is interesting. And, and, right. and I want to ask you a question because the industry's seen a couple of these game changes in the past. Right. TCP IP created <laughs> networking. Sure. Networking created internet networking. Right. Three com switches and right. Cisco. Cloud, the buzz is the same right now. Talking to all the thought leaders out there, right. and certainly what you guys have been kind of teasing out of the past two years right. is it's not a one cloud world. Right. There's a lot of interclouding. Not that there's a word. I mean, that's kind of like right. where we're seeing it. Right. Could you? Could you? Do you agree with that? And one, what yeah. are you guys doing? What is? What yeah. is that disruptive enabler? That what TCP/IP did to yeah. networking? Right. Cloud yeah. doing. Yeah. So lar I mean, large. Uh, well, there's a few questions in there. But but first of all, we believe that the lar large enterprises uh, and, and governments, multinationals, will have 10 plus clouds they'll use in 2018. Right. And there'll be a combination of private clouds and public clouds, and we'll talk later about community clouds. Community is kind of the next big focus. It's uh, vertical oriented, industry specialized, really focused on, on improving. Uh, the kind of I think the next big wave behind, behind cloud. But the, I think what's, what what HP brings, and this is really big. From you mentioned the OpenStack Summit, that's sort of the cloud native, the the science projects. I'm building brand new net, you know, net new uh, scalable applications. Um, you know, HP strength here. I've been a year and a half now. The strength here is in core IT, traditional IT, mission critical apps, healthcare apps, sensitive data, electronic health records, right? And so what we've emphasized. Yeah, business. Right, 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 <laughs> business. Right. Real we're, businesses. Right, and so what we're emphasizing is kind of both sides. We've got our hands all in OpenStack, <coughs> we're the top contributor there, we're, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're big behind open standards, but we're on the traditional side too. We're helping companies move, there's a dozen of them here talking, healthcare companies and banks talking about how they're moving to Helion but they're moving the traditional applications, saving 30 or 40% of IT to re free up resources to go do new things. And what we're doing is we're putting both of these worlds together, but in a careful way. If you try to take OpenStack 
into mainstream IT today. They don't have the skills. They don't have the, the process in place. In some cases, you know, it's not baked. That's right, it's not, it, right, it, it's right. It's not 100% right. baked. It's right. I mean, it's baking Implementation's out. not easy, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe in their R&D group, they're playing with it, but not mainstream, right? Yeah. So what we're doing, and with our big flagship announcement today with Cloud System 9, is we're putting both of those together, and we're saying, look, you can use this proven private cloud technology, some proprietaries in there, that we've been using for years, OpenStack underneath, and when you're ready, you can use the APIs in OpenStack to say store data right in Swift or something, but it's all kind of packaged together. But we're starting with the view that hybrid begins with private cloud, not public. So on that, on that note, I want to drill down on the announcement, get, let you get right. that word out a little bit more deeper, but I want to ask about that, that plug-in with right. the APIs. They're not mutually exclusive, what you're saying. Right, that's right. You could actually coexist with the two. That's well, it, what, what it means is you don't have to, as, as an enterprise, you do not have to have OpenStack skills yet to be able to use cloud systems <coughs> and get the benefits of OpenStack. But those APIs are there. When you train up your developers, you can take a, a hey developer, you've learned how now in you know, command line user uh, URL, I, in my application I can store data directly using Swift and OpenStack using the API. It's there for you. If you installed OpenStack net, net new, net native, right, you have to know all the APIs, you don't have to know how it all works. So what we're doing is we're bringing both those worlds together and we've got uh, almost 3,000 customers right now, right? Uh, these are big mission critical ones. We've got a, we've got a healthcare, uh, we've got uh, Cornell University that's going to be on stage tomorrow talking about how with, with cloud system, they're saving patient lives. That's the kind of outcome I want to get to. So you're seeing companies take traditional apps, move them into, That's right. into, into cloud. Now, are they, are they actually moving them in? Are they putting a sort of veneer on there and some kind of connection to them? And, and why are they moving them? They're actually migrating. Well, because with, in cloud system, you get, so when you have things like OpenStack underneath, you've got a resilient infrastructure you didn't have before. Servers and nodes can go down on a Saturday night because you have replication, for example your IT doesn't have to go in and fix it, right? So you begin to lower your cost of operations. You have the, you know, you have less IT staff. One of our, the CIOs of major manufacturers here, and he said to us yesterday, I'm going to shift my company from 85% IT operations to 85% developers by 2018. One of the largest manufacturers in the world, right? To do that though. Software developers. Software developers. But to do that though, you've got to find a way to free up IT who's constrained with current systems, right? Yeah. So what we've learned, so Fox here, for example, Fox is on stage talking about how they built a media cloud using cloud system, we moved the traditional apps to it, freed up millions of dollars in run rate, began to serve customers better, and they were able to rescale. Run rate and costs. And run rate and costs. And, and they were able to begin to retune and rescale their organization to build applications fast, to. And, and why, why didn't they build that in the public cloud? Because the, the information to them is sensitive. Uh, you know how media and piracy can be with movies? Imagine if that movie got out so faster, look right? Sony, look at right. Sony. Look at, look at the Cornell University. Wild Cornell, the largest biomedical research lab in New York City. That's health records. That's clinical trial information. You know, I asked them a question. I said, I asked their CIO, you know, in a year, what do you think you'll be percentage-wise, public versus private cloud? Because you're, you're going to use probably a little bit of both, right? Yeah, I'll use both. Our, our website is on the public cloud. Great. We're probably going to be 95% private cloud, he said. It's healthcare. It makes sense. Paranoid verticals are not going all public. That's Paranoid true. vertical. Companies with big systems that are mission critical are not going to rewrite them for, for public. This big well, this public time risk is also business risk. That's right. Time well, to market and moving them over. That's right. And then the business risk behind it. That's right. So, so legacy is a part of it. I mean, this is about legacy. I'm a company. There's trillions of legacy right now running today it, all around the world. That's right. So yeah. So you've got a, obviously a different view of the world, you and your customers, than sort of the the public cloud spectrum. Yeah. That's right. right? And, and yeah, you see the majority of apps right. remaining in some kind of hybrid or But remember, private. we are we are we are you know fans of public cloud. Yeah, so we, if, we if, have if customer says I want to move to public cloud, what do you say? You can use cloud system today right. and you can within within our cloud service automation tool or uh, burst out to AWS, to Azure and control it all with a cloud system. We're fine with that. So Bobby, I'm interested in this community cloud concept. Right. It's uh, fascinating to me because I think a lot of the community cloud has to do with the data underneath it around right. that industry. I wonder if you could talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, community cloud could be geographically based. So like we're doing some community clouds in China right now that are provincial based. Uh, they could be industry based. Maybe they're around uh, supply chain within an industry or they're healthcare based. You know, I think it's the idea that, that a community can, can organize processes that go across companies and you know, a cloud can help facilitate that, right? And orchestrate processes across and you know, I think there's going to be a big emergence of, of vertically oriented, industry specific, very specialized clouds that are, that are tuned though for the processes of that industry. And that's going to kind of cloud to a whole new level. It built on your existing infrastructure, evolving that, right? Yeah, and I mean they could use some public and some private in there. It doesn't, again, it doesn't matter where, it, you know, it really doesn't matter where things yeah. 
uh, you, you know, where, where, th where applications land so much is you can control them, you can provide compliance, and in some cases you know that it has to be somewhere inside your own four walls, in some cases, you may say it's okay running on a availability zone of Amazon East. So, I mean, essentially, you're sort of replicating the allure of the public cloud within you know, your control I, space. I, that's hybrid, right? Right. First thing, the private the control space. Right. Private cloud will only be successful if a private cloud a CIO can provide their developers a cloud-like experience. Yeah. Right. That's the only way. Otherwise, it's going to be a bunch of hardware and software sitting there un unused, right? And, so that, that's, and that experience is DevOps driven, integrated stacks. It's service catalog as well. It's yeah. where IT users can access a catalog and provision, provision something really quickly. It's APIs that are programmable. It's the polyglot set of tools that fit the different problems people have, Mongo or React or Cassandra. It's having that availability, but having that availability within your own and I'm going to do that, I'm going to roll in an appliance to get that capability. That's right. That's part of it, right? That's right. And it's right. going to be my VMware appliance, or my OpenStack appliance, or my Red Hat appliance, or Well, with BD, the cloud system is it's multi-vendor, you can run all those. In fact, right. Cloud System 9 today, we launched Hyper, we support for Hyper-V. So we don't care, you can use Cloud System if you're a VMware shop, you can, you can use it if you want to be bare metal, you can use it if, uh, 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 you can use it whatever ver what hypervisor you want to use it. That's that's the per beauty, the cloud. What the don't reason, we support? The reason, the, uh, what don't we support? Um, <laughs> COBOL, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, but, right. And, and you got to remember, the cloud system, and NIDA.O is critical because if you look at Synergy Research or Forrester Research, we're far in the leader wave. We're number one, core to Synergy, and with private cloud. And, and private cloud, new numbers are coming out from 451 that show that private cloud market's growing faster than public, and it'll be $24 billion in 2018, right? That's, those aren't small numbers, right? Now again, it's people want hybrid. The destination is hybrid. So we just believe that the path to hybrid begins well, with a compatible about private the customers. cloud. I mean, we, the theme here that I'm getting the vibe, we'll see the keynote, right. it's all about the customers, right? right? You get solutions messaging, which is great from a right. directional company marching orders standpoint. Right. When you get down into the weeds, it's how they're buying, right? That's right. So their buying patterns describe what they're doing. Right. They're buying private because they don't want to get ahead of their skis, because there's, there's a path. There's issues, right? Well, you don't really write the applications, there's a lot of risk in it, right? Risk, there's time, there's right. people, there's resources, and there's right. stability, all these things that you mentioned about OpenStack right. and others. And even with Amazon is the same challenge, and they're trying to you know, fill, in, fill in the holes there too. Right. So, I got to ask you, with this new announcement, you know, we've been following cloud system matrix right. back in the day. Right. Back in the day, with right. the day four years ago. <laughs> Remember we had- uh, Don't date yourself, Amazon. John. Yeah, yeah. This is our sixth uh, HP Discover. All right. So we've been seeing the whole evolution. So cloud system matrix became cloud system, and that was really about HP providing to their customers a data center version of a private cloud. That's right. That was the journey to the private cloud. That's right, multi-tenancy so and, and some self-service in there, that's right. Yeah, and the requirements are very specific. I got security, I have you know, data governance, right. all the compliance stuff. That's, that's right. You guys are good, HP as a company, right. and others are good. Are, that's their, their bread and butter. That's right. But now you throw cloud on, you mentioned they want cloud in private. Right. Expand more on that, and what examples can you give? Because that is really the what the, the rage of DevOps is. That's agile programming. That's what Docker containers are, are right. talking about. This is the new app right. development right. environment. That's right. So how do I do that with legacy and new? It's, it's speed to innovation, time to values. And uh, Fox Media Cloud went from months to 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 minutes in shipping video. Now it's obviously tape to digital, right? But that ability, and they you know they have proven data that shows they grab market share, increase customer satisfaction, right? That, and, and, and the ability then to build an application experience. On the business front, that they was on, enabled by the tech. On the business front, enabled by the technology, right? So in that, that Media Cloud earned John Herbert, the CIO, for, uh, Information Week 16, I think, for that project in this last Information Week 100 round. So, you know, there's very clear and, and, and concrete, to take, uh, take Cornell University again, or Wow Cornell, um, they are about speeding clinical trials. Can I get a clinical trial up faster, right? But that means it's got to be still secure, that means more data. So there's a few projects there. One is I want to get the clinical trial up faster. I want, I want them to be able to build the experience for that faster, my developers to do that, so I need that experience. But then I got to store a lot more. So what is it? They, they've got cloud system uh, for the automation. They're now using OpenStack Swift to store all of that electronic health record data, which is a hockey stick growth in data, just a surge of data, right? But in a very efficient, reliable, resilient way. So you know, it's an infrastructure as a service play, it's a platform as a service play, and it's a, developer enablement play. So I got to ask a hard question because everyone wants to know how you guys are vis-a-vis -vis the competition. You don't right. have to name names, but like you guys are a hybrid cloud provider now that right. has view into the legacy infrastructure of all your customers right. while future-proofing them with a roadmap to agile and all the greatness of uh, right. what you guys provide, cloud yeah. bubble social. So what does a hybrid cloud provider mean 
one. Right. And two, compare that against comp some of the competition. You can uh, name names or just talk to Yeah, generically. a hybrid cloud provider means I, as a single provider, I can give you the ability to use and support multiple distinct clouds. Ideally, a single tool makes it easy to vi have visibility and control, to measure, to meter, to charge back, to control you know, that entire, where the workloads are, know where the locality of the data is, probably because the CIO needs to, or CFO needs governance. They need to be able to provide compliance, ensure the data is accurate and safe and, uh, and, 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 and manage that all. So the difference between us, take IBM, IBM believes that the path to hybrid begins with public cloud. They bought, they bought software, they uh, talk about Bluemix, which is primarily a hosted service. They're not thinking about it from a private cloud perspective starting, starting point. We're, we believe actually that traditional IT matters. We believe that the bulk of freeing up traditional IT costs and enabling IT to transform, to be agile, to be a service provider, to be an internal service provider, starts with taking those traditional yeah. IT applications and making them more efficient. I mean, Dave and I were talking on the, our intro package today that uh, you know, assessing what HP has to do. Of course, we're speculating and pontificating and opining, but right. one of the things was, we said, you know, everyone's got to play to their strengths. Right. Right, and we were talking about this That's early, right. earlier. Okay, IBM has a strategy, other people have a strategy, they play to their strengths. You guys are playing to your strengths. Right. And you're saying that's IT as a base and extending in, and IBM makes a little bit, maybe a little bit different perspective, but, but others play to their strengths. What is that strength that, because there's plenty of room, the swim lanes are being developed, yeah. and hey, IBM can have a different approach, and right. if that's their provocative, right. you know. Our strength is that our existing customers today depend on us for systems that are mission critical and business critical today, systems that are taking a lot of their resources, in some cases 90% of their time and cost to maintain, and they want us to take them to the next step. And the journey is not a skip and jump over and be all cloud native tomorrow. The journey is free up my resources by, by deploying you know, smart private cloud, getting some self-service, you know, scaling up my, my, my organization, you know, giving a platform that allows you to support multiple clouds so you have those, that flexibility. Uh, you know. yeah. That was the message actually OpenStack, that cloud native apps just aren't developing fast because it's new. Right, so you're saying that essentially the difference that you mentioned IBM, you're not trying to force customers to sort of wash it through a PaaS layer and go into a, a, your infrastructure as a service. Is that really sort of the difference? I'm, right, what I'm saying is, is, is when you're a public cloud provider like Amazon or SoftLayer, you're not thinking about compatibility with other clouds. You're just, you're just not. You're not thinking about a world where people are going to use many, many, many different clouds. You're thinking about, you know, my, here's how my public cloud runs, here's, my, here's how it runs, and if you run it here, maybe I'll provide some extension to the private. We actually have the complete opposite view. We say, you know, our private cloud's all about compatibility. We bought Eucalyptus, right? GE will be on stage tomorrow talking about, yeah, they're all AWS, but the, not all the data is going to be on AWS, a public cloud, so they want AWS standards. So what do they do? They deploy Eucalyptus, and what do they call them? AWS satellites, right? It's a private cloud. So I got to ask about the, um, the compatibility with that, because that's interesting, because you, so let me straight up. You, so you believe in interclouding, to use that term I just made up. <laughs> where there's an interoperability between clouds. Data and portability that's a, that's are underneath thesis it. That's of, right. Of Making that frictionless is what we're all about, right? And that's multiple why clouds is what customers are going to have. That's right, multiple clouds, and, and you think about a, a multinational, where you have data that may need to be in EU for citizens' information, safe harbor or other kind of, you know, or you're in China or different places. There's data that's got to sit within those locations, right? They're going to be different clouds. You use Alibaba, right? Compatibility with Alibaba is going to be critical for our customers, and, uh, in, in, in China, so you know, we view that as a big opportunity for us. You have a tough job, Bob, I got to say. You, know, you guys have a good group of people. We've gotten to know you guys pretty well. Yeah, thanks. Solid team, the OpenStack work speaks for itself, and you really can't hide the fact that you guys have done a lot of number one contribution. Right, right. Um, but it's a hard game right now, and I was also speculating on the intro that you guys just haven't really clicked on your product thing because it's hard, right? Right. And the market's evolving, the product market's evolving right in front of you. So you guys are doing a great job, I can say that Thanks. from seeing firsthand. And but it's hard and it's still evolving. Well the shiny penny is is public the public cloud. They've produced at least well, that's numbers. Glamorous, that's shiny right? the shiny penny and 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 um, you know the hard work is with mission critical systems and business critical apps and things that drive real business. Yeah. And you guys are sticking to your knitting. You're That's also right. playing in the open source. You have you have right. investments in both sides. So I got to ask you for the folks out there that right. are trying. And you have to, one, your job is to communicate the value right. as a market from a marketing standpoint. What share with the folks out there what's going on that, that if they're looking and scratching their heads saying, I just don't get right. the HP Cloud Group. What right. the hell are they doing? Right. I mean, what do you say to that? And that's what people want to know. And you guys have a good story, and your job is kind of clean it up a little bit, and that's right. wise. What's the story that you guys are delivering 
for the folks out there who are watching? Yeah, so Helion is all, I mean, Helion's one year old, right? For one year old, uh, Discover last year, sit on here, we talked about just the launch, launch yeah. of Helion is that we're focused on, on real applications that matter to businesses, we're focused on business outcomes, we're focused on cloud technology that, that can help our customers transition from traditional IT and move to cloud, and we are focused on, on core IT systems, we're focused, and then we're focused on automation and orchestration, and all the tools that are necessary to, to, to make that easy. And you're in the cloud business. And we're in the cloud business, but we're not in the general purpose commodity public cloud race to, the, race to zero you know, infrastructure, business, we're, we're, we're fine with being compatible with that, and you could use that for certain processes and certain workloads, and we're going to make that easy for our customers. And you're playing your strengths. I mean, I would argue that Amazon, seven, $10 billion is not a race to zero, but right. that's a different business model. That's, that's right. their deal, right? That's right. Your deal at HP is you got enterprise legacy going back to Bill and Dave in 1939, and that's grown over the years, and that's right. And that's just not that's your right. business model. I think it's model. useful to look at from an application standpoint, which is what right. you're talking <coughs> about, because the application portfolio is a hybrid. Right. I mean, we like to talk in terms of, you know, the Jeffrey Moore, he's systems of record, system right. of engagement, and now systems of intelligence. Right. And, and those things will maybe live on, on different clouds. So what are you seeing in terms of that sort of transition and the infrastructure that those systems are running on? Yeah, so systems of record are typically monolithic applications today, right? A lot of SAP systems. SAP is one of the most popular workloads right now on Helion, right? I mean, how many SAP systems are moving to Amazon, right? I mean. You know, they. I'm sure they have a partnership, and I'm sure you go to a website and find something somewhere. But but SAP, yeah. Oracle, uh, well, those you know, aren't moving to the public cloud. Those, they're, they're, they're that's really right. not. They're doing they're, mostly POCs. Not in a big way. Sales, right? sales enablement. That's right. That's right. right. Those physical apps aren't moving to the right. Public but cloud. we do we think you know it's yeah. a, it's a you know they call it bimodal world or IT of yeah. two speeds, right? I mean, the SAP system though will benefit from a mobile front end, right? For certain yes. for certain right. Can, you know, how great is that you can run that on the same cloud? I mean, the cloud system, you can do that. You can move SAP over, you can free up 30% of your IT resources, and you can build a MongoDB-based mobile application, right, using some mobile tools from our IC Progress or Mendex, and, and you can uh, uh, extend your SAP app, and you can control it all. I mean, that's, that's what IT talks to us about every day, right? Um, and, you know, we're just starting at it from a point of, of we're going to make that ERP system work in cloud, and we're going to make it very efficient, we're going to help free up resources, and we're going to get, take you on a path to cloud native. And that's, that's, that that is working. And by the way, when you look at our growth rate, right? I think I said 2,000 customers last year, over 3,000 now, right? Uh, you know, we don't give our, our numbers out yet, but the growth rate's significant. Um, and you know, we've got a dozen customers on stage talking about real outcomes and real, real business outcomes, saving patient lives and quantitative. We've come a long way in a year, and I think that's the kind, yeah. once the, once the, when more people hear about that, and it spreads, Right. It's hard you to know. stay the course when everyone's trying to, you know, poking out, yeah, you're doing it wrong, but you guys have been disciplined. You've been staying on the right. alien path. It's been solid, it's working. That's right. Uh, what's your plans for the future this year? I mean, we got one minute left on the well, segment. Share at a high level, as much as you can, what, what the goals are for the group, what's your marketing objectives, right. what do you guys want to nail down and uh, come HP Discover London. So one of the London. things you should see here at Discover is, is where there's more focus on developers and DevOps, right? And while developers are still a small percentage, a lot of CIOs talk about the rise of the developer class. You know, how can, how can they better enable and empower their developers? How can they get developers to be able to, you know, want to use their platform and get the efficiency? And, and so I do want to spend time on that side of the equation, yeah. but not saying, hey, how do I do a bunch of really cool meetups that, that attract developers to come to it? No, I want to help the CIO help their developers. How do you make the CIO understand their developers, give them the tools they need, make it easy for them? And, and I think that's a really unique opportunity for HP where we can actually help our IT customers you know, serve their developers better, which then serves our business better. And rise of the developer you class is critical. You could also critical. use the OpenStack as the bottoms up with the organic, and then that's right. you probably could pull off with the Helion success an Apple, app, Apple, you know, worldwide developer-like conference model in the future. I mean, at the, but that's where it's Those going. Those discussions are are in progress. I mean, but but that's where that's you see right. it going, right? That's you right. You could engage actual coders, right? That, that, DevOps guys, that's top down, bottom up. You can do both. That's right. And I think by helping IT serve their developers, thinking about it that way, that's a unique view from our perspective versus us going directly to the end developers. Okay, Bobby Patrick, the CMO of HP Cloud, always a great guest on theCUBE, uh, candid as always. Um, not afraid to ask the answer the tough questions, doing great with Helion, congratulations on the one year anniversary. Check out the HP Helion Cloud System 9 announcement. They are a hybrid cloud provider. And I want to ask a couple more questions. We didn't have time about the internal uh, cross-functional. We can get that later. We'll see you uh, uh, later. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. Go to hpdiscover.social, our social site that we put together with theCUBE, CrowdChat's in conjunction with the social media influencers. Go there, go to CrowdChat, engage, join the conversation. Hashtag HP Discover. We'll be right back with more after this short break.